Coach Adam Fawcett Show brought to you by the B.B. Comer Alumni Association. A tight 21-14 win over Highland Home in the second round here at the stadium last week. And, uh, you know, we get ahead 21-7. to I'm thinking, hey, we got this. And here they come right back. Yeah, we – I think we got a little excited too early. Yeah. And um, we, we knew, you know, as a coaching staff, we knew they, they had the firepower and they had the, the big playability. So um, – What a great quarterback you know. they had. Uh, toughest kid I've seen in a long mm. time. You know that he uh, he just kept getting hit and kept getting up, kept getting hit and kept getting up. So uh, when he got tackled out of bounds over on our mm -hmm. sideline, uh, he ended up sliding under the table, uh, and <clears throat> we're trying to get the table off of him. The, like one table, one leg is on his throat, the other table leg is, has cut his foot open. So uh, you know I, we move everything. He hops up. And goes back and plays, you know. Yeah. So uh, after the game, uh, I went over and just checked on the team and talked to the coaches, make sure they had what they needed or whatever. And uh, he's getting stitched up on the on the on sideline the, on the visitors bleachers <laughs> over there. So uh, they're, they're fixing him all up, and he's sitting there just you know hanging out. Um, and uh, you don't see that very often. No, no, you don't see that very often. So re very, very tough kid. Um, I thought Highland Home uh, was well prepared for us. I thought. Uh, you know, you, you can't compare year to year, uh, obviously, but uh, you could tell that they were they that that they were prepared um, for the the field and the atmosphere and, and all the things that, that were going on. So your take on BB Calmer, how did they play in your mind? Well, you know, we we have not had a lot of testing mm -hmm. uh, over the season. We have not dealt with a lot of adversity over the season. And uh, this is really, that was really our first challenge as far as uh, dealing with some ups and downs and, and emotions of things. And, um, you know, we, we turn the ball over, uh, we defensively we bend and they get in, you know, get in the red zone, but we don't give up scores. We make them turn the ball over. So. Uh, I thought it was a great test for us, mm -hmm. um, and, and it shows some resiliency in us, and uh, shows hey, you know, we we've got to we got to pin our ears back and do our job for four quarters. So, um, other than a few uh, cramping issues, uh, I was pleased with with how we overcame that adversity and, and took care of some things, and uh, we, we've still got some, you know. Uh, one of the biggest things, that, one of the biggest issues I saw that we've discussed is stop trying to do too much. You know, uh, everybody do your job and everything will be okay. Don't try to do too much because when you start trying to do too much, that's when, when bad things are happening. Kamar Harris, uh, I don't know if it's just in my mind or, or not, but uh, he seemed to be more active in running the football uh, last Friday night. Was that by design? Oh, yeah, def definitely by design. Um, you know, last week was the first game he's carried the ball in the fourth quarter. Uh, so uh, definitely by design, and um, you know he's he's continued to get better and better and better, and, and that's been that's been an amazing thing. Uh, just a testament to him wanting to to be better physically and, and be better as far as knowledge of the game. And uh, you know, during the season we we moved him all over the place. Um, last Friday we moved him a little bit. We. You know, we realized that that they put five. You know, their their four-star Auburn commit. His his job was to go wherever Kamora went. So we we moved in the second half. We moved Kamora out to receiver and put Tristan Garrett in, and that that made him weak inside. So we go down the field for three or four plays before he comes back in the box. So uh, had to play some mind games and things like that, but. Uh, Kamora has has done a great job understanding the role and understanding that um, you know he's going to get his touches and his yards, uh, but he's also uh, able to do other things, whether it be at receiver or sniffer or wherever. You know, I, I think we could line him up at any position on offense, and and he could be successful at it. So you go up uh, fourteen to nothing, hmm. and uh, they score fourteen to seven. And, uh, you know, they get a stop. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, well, we're going to be <laughs> tested right here. And you stood the test. Yeah, yeah. I thought uh, defensively um, we stepped up and played well uh, when we needed to. Uh, even, you know, even on, on the scores given up, we had some, we, we were 
kind of where we were supposed to be, obviously. Uh, on the second, uh, on the second touchdown late, uh, we've got Christian Jimson on on one of their kids, and Christian's given up over a foot of height. Uh, so he's there. He was he was in uh, he was he was in a position he was supposed to be in. He just you know gave, was giving up the, that height. Uh, and Christian's a freshman. You know, we talk about all that's the, a lot of pressure. Yeah, we talk about all the seniors, but he he's a freshman, and he knows uh, the seniors that are out there. They expect him to do what he's mm-hmm. supposed to do. So um, he was a little upset about that, but I mean, he was in he was in position. He he did what he could, and um, you know, giving up the score there late. Uh, but you come back, and uh, we knew onside kick was coming. All we had to do was. You know, all we have to do is is cover the ball. Sure. And we can take a knee, and and we explained that to the guys, and um, it, it was a good. You know, the whole night was a good test for all of us. It was a good test of, as coaches. Um, as coaches, we got kind of uh, too too involved and too emotional at times, and we had to calm down because uh, you can never let the game get bigger than it is. You know, you've got to you've got to stay focused, and uh, the guys uh, the guys read our body language as much as we read their body language. So. Uh, we had to reel it back in and, and get focused and get locked in, and um, just overall a great night. Um, I, you know, you cannot, uh, you, you can't talk about that night without talking about our fan base uh, and talking about our crowd. Uh, the our, our our fan base has built probably one of the best uh, atmospheres in high school football in Alabama at all levels. Um, just super electric, a ton of noise, um, getting the guys hyped up and energized, and uh, they, man, our guys feed off that. So, uh, super proud of that. It's, it's really neat to. Uh, I usually take about 30 seconds um, while while the coin toss is going on to to kind of check out the crowd. They were there, weren't they? And, and they were there, and then uh, man, anytime we were asking for noise, it, it got loud, and uh, so um, definitely. Appreciative of them and appreciative of, of them coming out and, and, and being loud for us. And uh, hopefully they travel with us this week. Yeah. Chris Wilson, 51. Mm-hmm. I mean, time after time after time, he made plays last Friday. Yes, he, he did. And uh, Chris, is, uh, Chris is playing with a chip on his shoulder and he's playing with something to prove. And I, and I love it. Um, and, and him and I talk. Well, he's proving it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. And we talk about that. You know, he's. Uh, Chris is a college athlete, and he's going to play college football somewhere. Um, and the fact that that he's not been offered, and, you know, again, I think we've talked about it. You'll be a steal for somebody, I, no doubt. I, I've literally told coaches, "Y'all, you're crazy. Like, what what do you see that I don't see uh, to not offer this kid? Because uh, he's got the he's got the uncoachables for one. I mean, just just his body type, his arm, his uh, wingspan, his arm length, leg length." Uh, just speed, you know, he's got all the uncoachables, and then a coach can either slim him down and let him play outside, or they can put 30, 40 pounds on him and put him inside. I mean, he's he's literally a ball of clay that they can mold into whatever they want to mold him into. So um, he's <clears throat> his motor is is uh, constantly going. Um, he he turns it on for games. Uh, Chris will frustrate you in practice. I will tell you that because he's like, uh, he's he's not a practice guy. Um, but uh, he, you know, like when the lights come on and, and the scoreboard comes on, man, he's he's ready to roll. And uh, he's he's really in, in, in something I've told him too. And and he he doesn't really like it, but he's really kind of developed into a little leader. And uh, and that's not really his style. He's usually just you know. He wants to keep to himself mm-hmm. or whatever else, but uh, when he speaks, they listen, and um, he, he's kind of developed into that little leader. So uh, he's he's able to to get their attention when he needs to. Before we get to uh, the quarterfinals tomorrow night, uh, Friday night, uh, it seemed from a layman's viewpoint that your offensive line blocked pretty well the other night. Uh, we did we did all right. A um, few few miscues, a few things that uh, that we've got to work on, obviously still. But um, I was I was pleased with how well we did with um, with what was in in front of us. Um, they had a pretty good defensive so football team. They did defensively. They were really solid on um, on especially on some of the uh, lineback- linebacker blitzes and stuff like that. 
uh, sometimes they caught us uh, yeah. caught us in a bad spot. But overall, I thought we did a pretty good job. We knew what we had to do. Um, I was pleased with how Caden Brown did uh, against C.J. May, um, who's the, the Highland Holmes Notre Dame commit. Uh, Caden had a really good game against him. Uh, one of the a couple of few times that we passed the ball, uh, he did a really good job uh, pass blocking yeah. and, and taking care of business. So. Um, just got to keep getting better. Let's talk about Clark County, a uh, quarterfinal matchup uh, at Clark County Friday night, and uh, that'll be at H.G. Prim Stadium in Grove Hill, Alabama. Uh, state champion a couple of years mm -hmm. ago, and you remember them. No doubt. Um, you know, two years ago, we play them in the quarterfinals here. We get beat 14-7. to 7. Uh, We have opportunities to beat them um, and, and don't capitalize, but... Uh, they go on and, and uh, win the state championship at UAB that year. So, um, so we are we are familiar with them. Uh, they've got they've got some size. They've got some guys up front that are big. Uh, they they'll uh, do a good job making holes for for the Ezil uh, kid who's the back, uh, and he can he can get it done. So. Next the numbers: AJ Ezel. 1,763 yards, 25 touchdowns, and he's carried the ball a lot over 300 yeah. times. Yeah, over 300 times. That's, that's a lot of carries. So, um, and, and he's, he's shifty. I mean, he, if something's, if the play's supposed to go to the right and, and, and he doesn't like what it looks like, he, he'll cut back real quick. So uh, we've got to do a good job. <clears throat> we got to do a good job making sure that we don't get sucked in on the backside and, and he goes out the back. Uh, and, and that we read our keys and do what we're supposed to do. So uh, big, the, big, <clears throat> the big issue for us is going to be how we play against their front five. So their front five are, are big, big guys. Uh, they move pretty well. Uh, so uh, our, our defensive front is going to have a, a tall task. Mm. Uh, it's kind of ironic. Rob Carter, who's the head coach at Clark County, was here at Sylacauga just last year, and you know him. Yeah, yeah, I, I know Coach Carter. I've known him for years. I knew him uh, when he was at Beauregard, when I was at Smith Station, and uh, <clears throat> so we, we we know each other pretty well. Um, obviously, during uh, during track, we we've done track meets together and uh, things like that when we were over here. So uh, I know that he'll um, he'll have these guys ready to go and. Um, we've we've got to we've got to stand the test of being on the road. So, uh, been a long time since we've been on the road, and um, that that's gonna be that's gonna be key. So yeah, uh, kickoff seven o'clock uh, Friday night. Clark County Bulldogs hosting the BB Comer Tigers. BB Comer ranked number one in the state in Class Two A. People have asked me. I'll ask you. What is the schedule uh, of the rest of the week and the departing time, and how you're going to be going to Clark County? So we will um, we'll practice when I leave here. I'll head to the school and uh, we'll practice this morning. Uh, we'll have a little hour, hour and a half practice tomorrow morning before before everybody settles in and uh, starts eating turkey. Uh, and then on Friday we'll leave at about 10:30. So uh, we'll leave at 10:30 and go down to Greenville. Uh, we're going to do a walk through at Greenville High, uh, eat, and then head on down towards to Clark County. Yeah, that's about a three-hour ride or something mm -hmm. like that. So, B.B. Comer uh, trying to get back to the finals. Uh, the quarterfinals will take place with uh, Clark County. Defensively uh, or offensively for B.B. Comer, uh, you mentioned Clark County being big on their front. They're big defensively, too. Yeah, uh, big defensively. Um, you know, being 2A football, a lot of those guys play both ways like our guys do. So, um, yeah, they're, they've, got, they've got some size up front for sure. So um, it's going to be a matter of, of moving guys around and, and uh, maintaining blocks. And uh, I, when you have Kamor Harris and, and uh, he, can, he can deliver a couple blows uh, to some guys and then uh, you throw Tristan Garrett in there, and he's he's all over the place like a water bug. So uh, I, I feel like uh, we, we've got a, a a good backfield, and if we can maintain some blocks, and uh, we can get some first downs and score touchdowns. All right, tomorrow uh, Friday night kickoff out at uh, Grove Hill, Alabama. BB Comer on the road to take on Clark County in the quarterfinals of 2A 
high school football. Coach, good luck, and we'll talk next week. Yes, sir. Thank Coach you. Adam Fawcett, head football coach and athletic director of the B.B. Comer Tigers, brought to you by the B.B. Comer Alumni Association. Go Tigers. More after this.